Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. This is Ron Christie sitting in as the first mate of the show while our captain is celebrating the Rosh Hashanah holiday this evening. And also celebrating with just a few moments that we have remaining is Dr. Tevi Troy. He's the author of an amazing new book, which I'll hold up for those of us who are watching. It's called What Jefferson Read, Ike Watched, and Obama Tweeted 200 Years of Popular Culture in the White House. Dr. Tevi Troy, thank you again for joining us here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Thrilled to be here. Thanks. Now, I'm very curious, Tevi, why do you think it is important for us, and why is it necessary for us to have a, a look at the president's relationship with popular culture, dating all the way back uh, from our first president to where we are today? That's a great question, Ron, and I'm glad you asked it. First of all, it often has policy implications. So President Kennedy supposedly read The Other America by Michael Harrington, and that encouraged him to start the war on poverty. Uh, President Clinton read a book called Balkan Ghosts about what was going on in, in the Balkans a thousand years ago, and it made him more reluctant to get involved in Bosnia, so, although he eventually did. So there's a policy implication. Second of all, there's an economic implication. Ronald Reagan held up a copy of Tom Clancy's book at one point, and Tom Clancy was an uh, obscure insurance salesman at the, person, at the time, and he, and he became a bestseller as a result of the Reagan mention. And then third... Presidents convey aspects of leadership through their consumption of pop culture, whether it's Reagan and how he appeared in the movies, Obama trying to appear a common man by watching TV, or Bush trying to show his intellectual side by reading books. They show something about who they are by what they choose to ingest and what they tell us about. So it gives us a better window into our leaders. So looking at, at those leaders, the, the 44 that we've had thus far in the United States, who were some of the best, Tevi, and who were some of the worst at the utilization of pop, uh, popular culture to try to get out their agenda or to try to move the needle uh, with the American people? Bill Clinton was fantastic at this. He was a huge reader. He brought rock and roll into the White House in a way that it, it had not been before with the, uh, the Fleetwood Mac and Don't Stop. Mm -hmm. uh, he also was a huge movie fan. He loved watching movies all the time, but he didn't let it get in the way of his, his work. So Bill Clinton was at the top of the list. At the bottom of the list, I'd have to put Jimmy Carter. <laughs> he saw 480 movies as president, but they didn't seem to give him any better understanding of the American people. Uh, he was watching movies at a time when there was an economic crisis and all kinds of terrible things going on. He watched Manhattan twice in a three-week period when the energy crisis was taking place in, in California. It seems like misplaced priorities. Um, and he also he uh, mi misread a book, Christopher Lash's book, Culture of Narcissism, that led to his malaise speech, which was one of the worst uh, speeches in, in modern presidential history. And although it was initially well-received, it ended up uh, backfiring on him, and he had a 19% approval rating a few months after that speech. Well, and, and finally, Tevi, looking at our 44th occupant of the Oval Office, what do you think President Obama is doing here? Do you think it's to his advantage that he is trying to cultivate uh, popular culture and social media the way that he is? Or do you think that that comes at his detriment as president? Yeah, well, first of all, you can't argue with success. He has <laughs> very skillfully used pop culture in winning two presidential elections, and you can't take that away from him. At the same time, he is the first president to go on one of these late-night talk shows as president, he went on the David Letterman show, one of his many appearances on the late night shows, and he was asked about the size of the national debt, and he said he didn't know, which I didn't think was helpful to presidential leadership. And I think it brings the presidency down a bit. So there are certainly political advantages to it, but I wonder about the long-term implications for the dignity of the office. Final thought, what is a, a little nugget here that folks are going to be really surprised without giving away the entire thrust of the book uh, that they will have read uh, and know that they, uh, once they've read your book, that they might not have known before. Absolutely. Woodrow Wilson, our only Ph.D. president, loved theater and particularly vaudeville. He saw 250 plays as president, but he most liked the vaudeville-type shows. Dr. Tevi Troy, it's, on, it's an honor and a privilege to have you on, and I wish you all the best success for your great book. Once again, folks, what Jefferson read, Ike watched, and Obama tweeted 200 years of popular culture in the White House. Tevi, my friend, thank you so much for joining us on the Steve Malzberg Show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tevi. And as we wrap up tonight, we've had a very fascinating discussion, I think, of looking what's going on in America today. We're looking at the uh, crisis in Syria, the challenges confronting America. We're looking at the intersection of race and politics. What does that mean about who we are and where we are as a culture? And finally, the last opportunity to speak with Dr. Tevi Troy about popular culture in America, also 